So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, our studies with the uh, RNSH uh, of HPV. And uh, my disclosure down here is I'm an inventor on some of these patent applications covering this data. And the ICE HPV uh, logo is there to remind me to put a plug in for the uh, uh, ICE HPV uh, consortium. It's a grassroots effort from uh, uh, researchers to uh, try and uh, design a evidence-based, uh, science-driven uh, platform or strategy for curing HPV. There's a number of us here in, the, in uh, the meeting today that are involved in this effort, and there's uh, brochures out at the registration desk for anybody who may be interested in learning more about them. He's good. Okay, so our target is the uh, um, HPV RNSH. Uh, the reason that we target it is that HPV reverse transition, transcription is catalyzed by the coordinated action of the viral DNA polymerase, which is the uh, active activity of the uh, um, reverse transcriptase domain, and the RNSH activities of the polymerase protein. The RNSH functions to destroy the RNA and the RNA DNA heteroduplex intermediate that's made during reverse transcription. Blocking the RNSH stalls minus polarity DNA strand synthesis and inhibits plus polarity DNA uh, synthesis, uh, terminating uh, viral DNA synthesis. Um, there's no uh, drugs that exist against the RNSH primarily due to difficulties in establishing proper screening assays that we've recently solved. Uh, the RNA drugs are very attractive though because they would block both formation of uh, um, infectious virions and the recycling pathway back into the nucleus to affect the CCC DNA function. Um, so that's why we're, uh, we're pursuing it. Um, we started uh, this study working at a, uh, at a um, biochemical level. Uh, after many years of work, uh, quite literally going back to the 1990s, we now can purify two different enzymatically active forms, the RNASH from E. coli. One of them has a maltose binding protein tag on it, and the other one has a sumo tag on it. This is the MVP protein, that little faint band there is the uh, sumo tag protein. Uh, this enzyme is uh, suitable to be studied in a fluorescence assay that is a, a, a um, molecular beacon assay where the decline in fluorescence indicates uh, activity. Uh, it's a pretty good assay. Um, and uh, you can see here an experiment done with an inactive RNASH inhibitor. Here's an active RNASH inhibitor. And you can see that we can detect the activity. The, the assay is also suitable for doing mechanistic enzymatic analyses, as shown by this KM plot uh, here. Um, however, what it's not good for is uh, high throughput screening yet, because it's got an unacceptably high false uh, uh, negative rate. Uh, so it's primarily being used for mechanistic analyses right now. Um, what we have done uh, also is generated a suite of assays for looking at uh, viral replication. Uh, remember, inhibiting the viral uh, RNASH activity blocks synthesis of the positive polarity DNA strand, and it also truncates most of the minus polarity strand DNAs. So older assays that have been done that measure total amount of DNA accumulation generally were insensitive to detect RNASH inhibitors because they were being masked by this uh, residual uh, minus polarity DNA that is uh, dysfunctional. Uh, therefore, we developed a strand uh, preferential quantitative PCR assay that uh, takes advantage of HPV's uh, uh, strange uh, genomic structure to be able to preferentially pick up the two different strands. We uh, uh, measure this assay in cells that inducibly express the HPV. The assay has been miniaturized down to a 96 well format. Z prime factors are always over uh, 0 0.6. They're oftentimes up and around the 0 0.8, 0 0.9 levels. Uh, and we use these replication assays as the primary screening tool uh, to our, uh, improve our RNASH inhibitors because it really measures where the rubber meets the road is, is it working against the virus in cells. So the screening status of our project is um, because we, can no we cannot yet do high throughput screening, um, uh, we uh, did hypothesis-driven screening based on uh, looking at chemotypes that contain inhibitors of the HIV RNASH. So far, we've screened right around 400 compounds. Uh, 93 of those, or about one quarter of the compounds that we looked at, had some activity against HBV. 17 of them have uh, EC50 values below one micromolar. Uh, we found low to sub-micromolar uh, EC50s among alpha-hydroxytropolones, anhydroxyacyclinolindiones, anhydroxynaphthyridinones, and anhydroxypyridinedienes. 
Uh, and as usual, when you're starting a early stage drug discovery, there's uh, plenty of cellular toxicity present that must be reduced during development. However, you can see here, we are getting some substantial therapeutic index values, which are, of course, the ratio of cytotoxicity over efficacy. All right, so we've spent a, a large amount of time, probably at least as much, uh, uh, the amount of time that we've spent looking for inhibitors, characterizing the uh, uh, target to see whether or not it is a valid, valid drug target. So this uh, slide shows some data from two of the questions that we've asked, just a subset of much of the data that we've generated. Uh, uh, the first question was, does HPV's very high genetic diversity in the patient population uh, uh, make us r run at risk of having uh, developing inhibitors that are specific for only a single uh, genotype. And so we address this by expressing 13 recombinant different genotype B, C, or D RNSHs and testing them against compounds from three different uh, chemical classes. And in all cases, they were equivalently sensitive to those compounds, as is shown by this example data with the alpha hydroxytropolone compound number 46 against. Uh, uh, against the uh, subset of the, um, uh, of the RNSH variants. The other question we asked is based on the fact that uh, future HPV therapies are almost uh, certainly going to be done in combination therapies with other drugs, as many people have mentioned at this meeting so far. So we asked whether or not the RNSH inhibitors could be synergistic with other, uh, other uh, inhibition mechanisms. So we took two different chemotypes of HPV RNA-SH inhibitors, and we tested whether or not they could interact with lamivudine or the uh, uh, capsid assembly modifier HAP12, and we found that the, they were, uh, in the chow Talalay analyses, were synergistic with, the, with lamivudine and additive with the capsid uh, inhibitor. And interestingly, they were also synergistic with each other, implying that they may actually be interacting with the enzyme in a different manner, which wouldn't be a big surprise given that they're very, uh, chemically very different. So this tells us that RNA-SH inhibitors are likely to be active against a wide range of clinical isolates and to be suitable for combination therapies with other drugs. Here's a, an experiment that uh, we did. Uh, again, this is a proof of principle experiment. It's not intended to be anything beyond a proof of principle experiment. But what we wanted to find out is whether or not it's possible to inhibit HPV uh, uh, replication in an animal by targeting the RNA sage. So in, in collaboration with uh, Seventh Wade Labs and Eucurus Corporations, uh, we infected FRG knockout mice uh, carrying humanized liver with HPV. Uh, and we measured serum titers <coughs> weekly. The animals were treated with uh, uh, the maximum tolerated doses of two different compounds, number 110, which is an alpha hydroxytropolone, number 208, which is an anhydroxypyridine dione, uh, by IP injection for two weeks, and then were followed for three more weeks after that. Myremia was uh, significantly suppressed in the compounds that are treated with number 208. Here you can see the uh, comparison for entecavir. This is a high dose of obviously a frontline drug. Um, but you see we got a very significant uh, uh, drop in viral uh, titers, it's about 1.4 logs there. The alpha hydroxytropolone was a little bit less, uh, but it was still highly statistically significant drop. Um, and all of these mice survived, but adverse effects were, uh, were noted. The uh, viral titers rebounded after withdrawal of the, uh, of the compounds as is expected, and surface antigen E antigen levels were un uh, were un unaffected by this um, treatment, and again, that is as expected for a short-term treatment with a replication inhibitor. So basically what this does is it validates that RNA-SH inhibitors can work in vivo, validating the RNA-SH as a viable drug target. Last uh, data slide here is hit-to-lead optimization. What are we doing now? What are our efforts? Uh, hit-to-lead optimization of the alpha, uh, uh, of the uh, three of our different compound classes are uh, continuing. One's been dropped due to intractable uh, um, cytotoxicity. We're doing mid-throughput hypothesis-driven screening looking for novel chemotype, chemotypes of inhibitors. We're working very hard to improve the recombinant RNA-SH to enable high-throughput uh, screening assays. And uh, we're just now starting to be, do some RNA-SH uh, inhibitor binding studies using uh, surface plasmon resonance uh, to be able to uh, guide our compound uh, optimization. I'm way excited about this. This is last week's data showing we can measure binding and on and off rates, and that's all I know about that right now, but I'm so excited about it. Uh, so in any case, we're working on it. 
So in summary, we can make active RNAsH uh, uh, enzyme. Uh, generation of the enzyme led us to uh, develop a suite of screening assays for RNAsH inhibitors. We found that it, the enzyme can be pharmacologically inhibited and suppressing the RNAsH blocks the replication. Uh, we've identified uh, inhibitors uh, that are down into the low nanomolar EC50 values and TI values over 700. The best compound actually has an EC50 value right now of 50 nanomolar. Uh, the RNAsH has been validated as a viable drug target in vivo, and we're working at hit to lead medicinal chemistries to generate additional, um, uh, uh, to generate clinical candidates, because at this point, obviously, we're, we're not to the point where we can consider going into a human being. Uh, and so lots of people have worked on this, uh, been funded by uh, a number of uh, sources, especially the NIH. Uh, it's been very generous to me. So thank you. Thank you.